Former President Donald Trump has been asking his lawyers repeatedly to get my documents back. That's according to new reporting from Rolling Stone. And now Trump's legal team is actually trying to lay the groundwork to retrieve some of the classified papers seized by the feds. So what exactly is in those documents that Donald Trump wants so desperately to get back? Well, here's what we know so far. When he left office in January of 2021, Trump took more than 700 pages of classified documents, including some related to the nation's most covert intelligence operations. That's according to a letter the National Archives sent to Trump's legal team in May. In January of this year, Trump had initially complied with the National Archives' request and handed over 15 boxes with documents from the CIA, the National Security Agency, and the FBI. But those boxes, well, they arrived at the National Archives with no inventory, no logs, and in, they contained a hodgepodge of documents, some of which didn't even come from Trump's tenure in the White House. And investigators knew some crucial documents were still missing. For instance, Trump's original letters from the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un and the note that President Barack Obama left Trump before he left office. That's according to The New York Times. And then came the search of Mar-a-Lago when, according to The Times, FBI investigators took more than 300 documents with classified markings. During the search, the FBI retrieved 26 boxes, including 11 sets of material marked as classified. Two people familiar with the search told The Washington Post that some of the documents contained extraordinarily sensitive information, which could reveal how the United States gathers intelligence. One of the sources said that the info Trump was holding on to was, quote, among the most sensitive secrets we hold. Some of the items in those 11 sets of documents included information about French President Emmanuel Macron, handwritten notes, photos, and other top-secret materials. And now we're learning more about just how long this push and pull between the National Archives and the former president has been going on. The Washington Post just obtained an email that the National Archives sent to Trump's lawyers back in May of 2021, just a few months after he left office, saying roughly two dozen boxes of records stored in the White House residence had not been returned. And Trump's own lawyer, Pat Cipollone, determined that those classified documents should be handed over. So why weren't they returned immediately? Why did Donald Trump insist on holding on to these documents over and over again? And even after the search of Mar-a-Lago, why does he want them back so badly? Joining me now is national security attorney Bradley Moss. Brad, welcome to the show. I want to start off by talking about the deficiencies in this case. As we know, Trump filed a civil action in another courthouse in front of a whole other judge when he should have just filed his motion before the magistrate judge, Bruce Reinhart, who's already dealing with the Mar-a-Lago search warrant. Brad, is Trump's legal team really that bad? You know, it's hard to say they're not, given what we've seen so far from them. Putting aside how horribly written that motion was that they filed before the new judge in that other courthouse, throughout this process, we've been learning the details of what went on behind the scenes for 18 months. There's a number of times where they could have intervened, brought motions to stop this from ever getting this far if they thought their clients' arguments had merit. They knew in May that the National Archives was turning over the classified records to the FBI and was rejecting the executive privilege claim that Trump was trying to invoke. They didn't file anything then. They didn't file anything after June when there was a subpoena and the records were seized at that point. They waited two weeks after the search warrant to even bring this before another judge instead of going before Judge Reinhardt. It's not exactly been a dis- you know a display of competent lawyering at any stage of the process by Trump's legal team. And it really makes you wonder, does he have, aside from the money, which I'm sure he's got enough of, does he have the ability to hire the proper kind of legal team to defend him in what could be a very high-profile criminal case. And let's be clear, you know, Brad, in this case, 
it's been argued that he's been forum shopping, meaning he got this civil filed motion in front of a Trump appointed judge, Judge Aileen Cannon. But she's not having it either. She entered an order that basically told his legal team, you guys need to let me know how I can even address this issue, why it's not in front of the magistrate judge, Bruce Reinhardt, and whether or not there's anything that I can even give relief to because it was such a poorly drafted motion. But eventually, if they get it right, which I'm not sure that they eventually will get it right, what relief could Trump get in the immediate sense to try to pump the brakes on what's been happening in terms of the National Archives and the FBI having seized all of this information? Yeah, and so I'm waiting to see what they file tomorrow to see how they clarify this before Judge Cannon. But what the most obvious relief they're seeking right now is just the special master. Mind you, it's already been two weeks. They've, you know, the FBI has already been going all through all these records. And the only thing the special master would be considering was what was seized two weeks ago. The stuff from months ago has already been sorted and documented by this point. We're long past that. So that would be the one possible area of relief they might get Mind you, it's not clear how a special master could be involved here, because there's no, I've never heard of one for classified records. The only cases they cited to had to deal with searches of attorneys' offices. Donald Trump's not a lawyer, so I've never heard of it for this kind of situation. And they provided nothing but rank speculation to try to call into question the ability of the FBI filter team to properly handle this. The FBI's already started returning stuff to him that they didn't ultimately need that fell outside the scope of the warrant. It's not clear what they'll be able to produce that flies in court as opposed to on cable news that will really persuade the judge. So, Brad, we learned from The New York Times that one set of documents taken from Mar-a-Lago by the FBI had the highest level of classification. Now, that's kind of your wheelhouse, right? So can you walk us through very quickly the levels of classification and what kind of information would warrant the highest classification? Sure. So under the executive order, which is, dates back to the Obama era, because President Trump never changed it with a new one, there are basically three levels of classification. There's confidential, which is the lowest, there's secret, and there's top secret. The stuff that has had the most attention from this raid were things that were classified top secret and that also required either what's known as SCI or sensitive compartmented information access eligibility or SAP, special access program access eligibility. Those are some of our most sensitive pieces of intelligence that's uh, in phone intercepts, that's data intercepts, that's satellite imagery, any number of uh, key, you know, the crown jewels for the intelligence community. Those are the kinds of things that, according to the government, if it gets leaked out, if it gets in the hands of an unauthorized party, can cause exceptionally grave damage to the national security. That's the kind of stuff that when Edward Snowden leaked all his documents a decade ago, required NSA to rebuild entire capabilities because what he had exposed had eliminated their ability to run them, given now what foreign governments knew about it. So, Brad, there is some reporting as well that Trump himself was overseeing the review of documents, that he excluded some aides actually having their own eyes on it. So to the extent that we've always talked about intent, because you have to have some knowledge of the basis of the crime that's being committed, you have to have some intent to be able to violate a crime. Does Trump have to have the intent to have violated some of these statutes in order to have some type of criminal exposure here? Yes, particularly so with the relevant Espionage Act provisions that deal with the willful retention of information relating to national defense. So if this had just been a case where he had taken the documents to Florida, the archives had come to them, said, hey, we need documents back, and they found these classified records, and he had turned everything over at the time and been cooperative and hadn't been fighting them over 18 months, this never would have been a criminal matter. Even if the Justice Department reviewed it, they generally don't bother prosecuting in that kind of situation. You know, it's more of a oops, sorry, mistake, and they let it go. It happens a lot. What is it causing him exposure here is the obstruction and the concealment that he was purposely going through the records, that he had his staff reorganizing and resorting out what was in these boxes, that stuff was being moved out of the storage room in the basement into his personal office, into a closet in his personal office. That's what's putting him at risk of actually getting indicted under not only the Espionage Act, but the two uh, obstruction provisions that were cited in the search warrant. It reflects a willful uh, intent on his part to conceal this and prevent the government from recovering these classified records. 
Well, you know, Bradley Moss, national security attorney, there's that old saying, even a dog knows the difference between when it's being tripped over and when it's being kicked. And it sounds like the National Archives said, you got some indicia of guilt there, Mr. Trump. I think we're going to come and knock on your door and spend some time with those documents. Thanks so much for being here, Brad. I really appreciate it. Anytime.